Hello guys, hope everyone is uh, doing well. On uh, today's video, I'm going to do something a little bit uh, different here. I've had a little bit of a request uh, from a long time uh, viewer of the channel uh, to sort of go over how I how I make the, make the thumbnails. Uh, so this video is brought to you by uh, Woodsman. Let me see if I can find his comment real quick here. Uh, Woodsman8047. He's been subscribed to the channel for almost a year, and he's a top commenter. And how do I know that? Well, I know that because YouTube is tracking him for me, since he's one of the, the top uh, viewers here of the channel. And he says you would get a million views if you made a tutorial on how exactly you made the thumbnails you use. I, for one, would be glued to my screen. Uh, so, sure, I'm definitely going to show this if I get my million views. <laughs> I don't think it's going to catch the YouTube algorithm uh, quite like that for various reasons. Uh, but I don't know how many people are interested in this. However, I know there's one, and uh, that's all it takes really for uh, me to make a, a video. So this is going to be sort of like a part stream, like live stream video, part recording video, but it's not live. It's just, I'm just going to ramble like I normally do, like a live stream and just record in the video, just because I'm not going to do much uh, editing here. We'll just kind of stumble our way through it, get the get the whole process. Maybe I'll pause once in a while to catch my breath or something like that. But anyway, so what you're seeing on the screen is uh, what you try to avoid when you're jumping into the world of AI art and images. It can be quite uh, daunting. Uh, to sort of jump into this sort of thing because you end up uh, with interesting images like the one in the bottom left there. I don't know what's going on there. It's some kind of creature with like six legs and I don't know what's it's like a flying squirrel thing or something in the top and bottom right, yeah, it's got some interesting rock creature or something, right? Anyways, uh, and you can see how it has issue with text. Um, and what this was is I just typed in I wanted a thumbnail for uh, for the game Way of the Hunter, and this is what it spits out. So if you're if you're trying to jump into uh, AI art, uh, it is it can be frustrating uh, if you don't have sort of um, I guess I guess a bit of a guide on it. I've never really made a guide on this because I never thought I was qualified or have like a you know there's there's all sorts of digital artists out there and. And guys dedicating their channels to this sort of thing, and I and I never thought I was uh, would have much offer in a guide, but I got thinking about it. I've been doing uh, Mid Journey specifically uh, here for a year now, and I got about twenty six thousand generations or something like that. So I thought about it, and I'm like, ah, well, I probably have uh, a few things uh, <laughs> that I can help someone out with if they're trying to get into it, uh, just because I I do get. Um, Nice positive uh, feedback on the thumbnails. Uh, so I'm just trying to think uh, really where to start. It's just going to be one of like a normal video I do, just not in Way of the Hunter. I just wing those, so I'm just winging this too. It's always fun just to, just to see what happens. Uh, so there's uh, many ways to get into AI art. Um, well, as you may have heard, AI is pretty crazy these days in all sorts of fields. I mean, there's uh, places where... Uh, AI can make um, music and everything now, and animate videos and all sorts of stuff. And, well, it, it gets a little crazy, but if you focus down to the AI imagery world and art world, it um, it's still pretty broad, but it's so broad it's, it's really difficult to cover it to cover all the different programs out there. There's all sorts of stuff out there, free stuff and paid stuff and uh, apps for your phone and everything like that and it's getting so broad that you really have to specialize in one or two programs uh, but I, 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 pro I try not to get too detailed into this uh, but anyways I specialize in mid journey and the reason for that is just because I've been doing it for a year and now and I'm quite familiar with it and if you stick with something for long enough and you you stick with it as it grows uh, you know you don't sort of want to leave it since you've got a good a good hold on it and this is this is really a brand new field in in the world, and it's developing so fast, it's it's hard to keep up with. And it's, uh, anyways, it's it's a interesting new skill set, and it's it's changing a lot. Um, but yeah, I use uh, Midjourney. Uh, it's got a lot of upsides to it, and it's got um, 
a few downsides to it. One downside, the main one, is it's paid because there's a lot of free AI art generations out or generators out there. Uh, but Mid Journey, if you can afford it and, and want to jump into it, uh, it's uh, the benefit of it is it's easy. Fair, well, it's not necessarily easy to use because uh, it is Discord commands and stuff like that. Uh, but it is the easiest one if you don't know what you're doing to get good results. Um, if you could just type a few things in, um, it's got that going for it, and it it is leading. It is a, a leading service in the area of AI art, so it's it doesn't it doesn't do everything that other programs can do, but the stuff it can do, it does very very well. Um, yeah, so now that's kind of the the introduction to it. I mean. Midjourney's Discord base, but they do have a web version, but I don't know if it's released yet. I, I, I don't ever use it, so I'm not too sure if it's still in alpha stage or not. They're trying to make the interface a little easier to use. Uh, but yeah, so what we're going to do is, uh, you know, I'm going to have to think about something to practice on here, and uh, we'll just kind of go through a, a couple uh, practice runs. So there's uh, six minutes of rambling. I just had to pause here and catch my breath here. Uh, but we're going to start generating a few things here, uh, just so you can see uh, see how it's done here. Uh, so it is based on Discord, and it's all these uh, command, you know, based sort of uh, input stuff. Uh, and the one thing you want to know, though, is the AI works in sort of a way that uh, if you're trying to get it an image, uh, the most reliable stuff is is things that are you know popular across the internet so it can do a dog it can do a cat you know extremely well uh, but if you're trying to do say an animal that's that's rare uh, it it has trouble with it so we'll do an example here uh, so basically with mid journey it does the command imagine uh, basically that and then you get a prompt so um, the the commands that you give the AI are just called prompts. Uh, it's a very well, it is a very complicated thing in the prompting world. Like people sell these prompts, and Midjourney is a very kind of open community sort of thing, which prompts are shared. Uh, but it, it's I don't want to get into it too much. But prompts are kind of a crazy world. Be, people sell these things, and it's it's kind of weird because you can't copyright words and stuff, or you can't really own them prompt but somehow you sell it i don't know uh but anyways basically you, you prompt it with something with mid journey you tell it to you, imagine something you can do it nice and simple imagine dog there you go it's not very uh, difficult to do and since a dog is a very popular thing out in the internet uh, i fully suspect we'll get excellent results uh just simple like that is so it's going to generate and since it's a very like popular thing to search for, it's going to get, uh, you're going to get four portraits, it looks like, of a dog in high quality. Uh, you can also be more specific. We can imagine uh, one of my other subscribers, uh, Greg there, he likes German Shepherds. Uh, so we'll do German, oop, oh, I'll put spell it right, Shepherd Dog. And since that is a very uh, popular dog, we will also get uh, probably really good uh, generations of a German Shepherd. So as a general, we'll just take a quick little look at this. So this is just letting uh, the AI algorithm in the current version that it's in uh, just take a guess at what we want. It it it's uh, not guessing really what we want, but you know we're letting it do what it wants. We're just saying we just want a dog. You know, uh, look across the internet or all the. It's not really looking across the internet either. It's hard to explain, but the it's it's been so trained at this point. It's just looking into its own database, right? And it's going to draw you some dogs. So these are all one of a kind images. You might find other ones pretty close to it, uh, but nothing's ever repeated really in this world, like in this uh, world of AI art. Uh, these are all unique images, and with Midjourney, if you're paying into a subscription for them, you do own the rights to them. Uh, but it, uh, I mean, it's so complicated, it's hard to, uh, hard to not ramble on and things, <laughs> because I'm no legal expert either, but you can't copyright any of these AI art stuff unless you take it and actually manually do stuff for it. 
Uh, but then we got four pictures of the dog, and then as you can see, it does uh, German Shepherds quite well as well. So at this point in the AI world, uh, these common animals and common things in the world, it can do really quite well. Uh, depending on the uh, d well, depending on the program you're using. So Mid Journey here is sort of top tier in the category right now of AI imagery and art, so it can handle these uh, pretty darn well. Now if you do something like what we have in Way of the Hunter, if you try Imagine Cape Buffalo, uh, we'll see what it spits out here. It has a little bit of trouble with a Cape Buffalo, because for one thing it's got the two words with it, right? If you do like a, a free uh, AI art program or something like that, I wouldn't be surprised if, it's, if, if it draws a buffalo with a cape on it. Uh, but typically mid-journey uh, will know what we're asking for. However, it'll have trouble with some details because it'll focus on drawing a, a buffalo and it might not get all the, the cape buffalo details I'd be expecting. Uh, but it'll get pretty close. But uh, this is an example I will use uh, as in an animal that's not, you know, nowhere near uh, viewed on the internet like a German Shepherd is or a kitty cat is or something like that. So here's the Cape Buffalo. So the top left one's pretty good. What we're looking at is, uh, what do they call it, uh, where the horns are joined together. Uh, so this one's good here. Uh, this one's got some problems across the top. This one's not joined. And this one just doesn't really have that at all. So you can see if you're, if you're trying to make a Cape Buffalo, something that's not anywhere near searched as the other animals, uh, you're going to have a more challenging time. And this goes with every single category of everything across, uh, you know, the entire world. If it's something that's not out there a lot, um, it has trouble with it. Uh, so that's a, just a heads up to know because there's some things that you'll fight and fight with forever and the, the computer just doesn't know how to, uh, how to draw it very well. So you see this guy down here in the bottom left. He's, that's just not a good Cape Buffalo. <laughs> you know, this guy, he doesn't count either. This, he's got a funny phase going on. Uh, but this top uh, left one is definitely, I think that would definitely count. So it got it there. I think that one counts. Uh, so yeah, so that's just uh, sort of the basis of, of getting started. You got to keep that in mind. You can't jump right in and uh, be like, I'm going to ask for this very rare thing and, and get that to pop out there. I would start with the easier stuff and uh, go from there. Uh, so what else should we get into here? So uh, when you do just like a, a default image, you get a square, you get four squares. Every single, for the most part, every single generation request gives you four images to choose from. Uh, you'll see some buttons down at the bottom. Uh, you have the U1, 2, 3, and 4, and V1, 2, 3, and 4. Uh, it's talking about quadrants on, on the square here. So the top left is one, top right is two, uh, bottom left is 3 and bottom right is 4. And what this is talking about is the, the U is upscale and uh, the V is a variation. Uh, so I guess we'll just cover that real quick here. Uh, so we like uh, the, the first uh, top, top left uh, Cape Buffalo. So what we can do is we upscale it. When you upscale it, it sort of saves it to your, your profile in mid-journey. Uh, so it's easy to find again. Now it doesn't actually upscale in this version. Uh, these are all already upscaled, uh, but it just it just makes it larger. Previous versions, it would actually do an upscaling uh, uh, for you. Uh, so this is kind of like a side note to get these. Even though it looks good on a phone or uh, you know a smaller screen size or even even on a monitor, uh, the the resolution of the image is actually quite low. So it's something to keep in mind if you do jump into this and you pull these images out. If you go try and print them somewhere or make them bigger or, you know, print them, you know, a normal sheet of paper size, you're going to know, you're going to know some pixelation when you start doing printing. So there's, uh, these can't really just be taken and then uh, taken to a print. There's other work that you would have to do with them. So just keep that in mind. The resolution is uh, uh, quite low, the pixels per inches and everything like that. Uh, just straight out of Discord uh, takes additional additional work uh, if you want to want to print these sort of things. But for thumbnails, uh, it certainly works. That's I mean a lot of my thumbnails are kind of overkill for for what thumbnails need to be, um, but it's just kind of kind of fun to play around with it. So that's what upscale does. It makes it bigger. And then uh, what V1 does is if we like this uh, this picture here, but something's just off or we want it a little different. Uh, what it will do is it'll run this uh, upper left one again 
uh, and make another four images based on it. Uh, but in this this version of Mid Journey, they actually give you two var varying options here. Uh, if I just push V1, it will default to a very in the strong mode, which means it'll uh, it won't it it'll be more liberal with. Uh, you know, uh, repeating this image, it'll be much different. If you do this subtle one, uh, it'll give you four images much closer to this. So what we'll do is we'll do one of each. Uh, so this is simulating pushing the V1 button when you do this very strong. And then we'll do a very subtle too, just so you can see this as well. And we'll let that generate, just so you know what the basics, basic buttons do. And what makes it more complicated is Midjourney has a long history of uh, doing new algorithms and doing new versions of uh, their AI and how it interprets everything. And it's sort of like uh, having, you know, eight different Midjourney's uh, programs. Uh, but I'll try and get to that in a moment as well. Right now, I was just trying to cover some of these buttons because if you're jumping into it, you're going to want to know what these buttons do. Oh, this um, blue one with little arrow circles. It just means re-roll, so it just runs through your exact prompt again and gets you another four new images. All right, so here we go. Uh, this top one was the subtle one, so you can see it changed it uh, quite a lot. Actually, well, not quite a lot, but the face changed a bunch, right? But it kind of kept the horn sort of. I see some of them have a bit of separation in there, anything like that. And here's uh, the stronger one. So a bit more variation because this one added a really big body in the back. Um, not massive though, but it was a bit more, you know, this guy in the top left here, he's definitely, uh, significantly different. Uh, you'll notice that, you'll notice that difference as you sort of go along. Uh, there is a, there is a significant difference between these two, but not all, not all versions have it. Uh, so that is sort of the, uh, the very basics of, um, of sort of how you would start doing this. Uh, now, you can't really turn this into a thumbnail, of course. Now, you, you can these days, but it's a fairly new thing. But um, when you're doing a, a prompt, there's a lot of modifiers, or what do they call them? Um, what do they call them modifiers? Uh, I don't remember the exact word they use for it. Uh, but say we're going to do Imagine a Gate Buffalo. Um, yeah, it's just, I can't think of it at the moment. But if you do t uh, two dashes, you can do um, commands that uh, can modify your image. And the, one of the more popular ones that you use is AR, and it's called so for aspect ratio. And then you can set the ratio to whatever you want. So the square is just a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, you can do, I don't know what the limit is, but it's pretty pretty varied. Like how how much uh, of a of the aspect ratio you can do. So, but the popular ones are kind of like this. So 16 by 9 is your uh, YouTube thumbnail. So we're gonna do we're gonna run the same Cape Buffalo, just a basic prompt. Cape Buffalo aspect ratio 16 by 9. We're using the default uh, algorithm, which is the the most modern, up to date one. It's actually version 5.2 as of this recording. And we'll change it just so you can see. We'll do a 9 by 16 ratio. So we'll reverse it. We'll do it so it's tall. And we'll let that run. When you make the ratio bigger, it actually takes uh, longer for it to generate. And depending on your subscription plan, you'll have so much time you can use and things like that. Uh, I probably won't get into the, the billing part, but uh, there we go. We got some popped up here. So here, these are all ready to go for thumbnails. There you go. You've seen how I made my thumbnails. <laughs> now, the, the quality is not there for me to really go for because these guys are kind of all over the place here. Um, see, number one's not even a Cape Buffalo. Number two's got the sort of the horn thing figured out there, but he's got quite the face going on there. He's kind of like part rhino. I don't know if this is part, part hippo Cape Buffalo. And this guy's got teeth or something coming out. Uh, so it can be quite challenging uh, when you're doing or you're trying to get an animal that just doesn't quite know how to draw. So you'd have to run these uh, quite a few times. And, uh, you know, you can also expand on this prompt a lot. I'm just doing a very basic uh, command. 
here's the 9 by 16 so you can see so there's the the ratio change so this guy looks like kind of like a normal cow sort of this one's not right either that's just not what we're looking for at all and uh, this isn't bad if it connected the horns together but you see how it's struggling with that uh, where we can we can simply do you know we can go back to our German Shepherd uh, and we'll just do the aspect ratio uh, 16 by 9 and then you'll see it, it'll do a German Shepherd far better than than it can do a Cape Buffalo so there we have it there's our German Shepherd thumbnails all ready to go uh, done a very good job at it um, I'll just pop and you know upscale number three that looks great his collar looks a little off but uh, you know for thumbnail that's just fine oh no it looks okay there there you go a nice little German Shepherd so basically you just save this picture uh, you can go to your mid journey profile and pull it out of there you can save it right from discord and then you'll know, throw your way of the hunter logo on there and say German Shepherd puppy dogs coming the way of the hunter and then you can make your click clickbait a thumbnail and Make your five dollars, uh, sort of thing. So, uh, are you still with me, uh, woodsman? <laughs> like Twenty-one minutes. Are you sure you want to see all this? Uh, yeah, I just don't know how to uh, how to fully sort of explain. There's just so much, uh, so much sort of to the process of doing it. But that's kind of the basics of it. As you can see, my my prompting is very simple. I guess I'll I'll show more complicated uh, prompting so let's try to make let's try to make a thumbnail uh, for way of the hunter now I don't want it to be too difficult uh, so let's pick an animal that's not uh, not too difficult but maybe we'll, maybe we'll just do a, a deer you know just 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 a basic deer well with we'll think about it in a second what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go look through my uh, vast catalog of prompts I'm gonna pull one out from the past and we'll we'll mess around with it all right, so here we go. 22 minutes in the video, we can start having some real fun with uh, the actual thumbnail stuff. Uh, so down at the bottom, it might be sort of hard to see. I reached back into my my catalog there, and I pulled out uh, one of the prompts I used to use a lot, and one of the older uh, versions of uh, Mid Journey, and it always turned out to uh, to work out uh, fairly well. Uh, so this one specifically came from a, an image I liked. Uh, but it's a mule deer watercolor charcoal uh, painting. Heaven, stunning, imposing, cinematic lighting, fantasy, stylized. Aspect ratio a three by two. So the prompt uh, doesn't really make much sense when you're uh, reading it this way. But it's pretty much just giving the the algorithm the keywords that you want to use. So we want imposing, we want cinematic lighting, we want a fantasy stylized. Uh, heaven is uh, one that I found. If you put heaven in there, I can give you some real nice, uh, you know, heavenly glow kind of things. Kind of adds to it. And I don't know if anybody ever does a watercolor uh, charcoal painting, uh, but I found uh, charcoal and heaven were kind of like a neat little combo. Like you play with all these words and, and prompts, and you find out what the what the AI likes to use and the appropriate mix, and and uh, this is where the fun uh, starts to happen. So we'll play around with this one, and we'll just see uh, see how it goes. So let me think now. I'm just going to click over to my other screen real quick because I don't know which uh, which a version of the algorithm I used when I created it. Three by two would indicate I was in one of the version fours. Not a big deal, but I guess I'll go over this now. And this might be actually hard to see on the screen. Um, so, at the end of the, the prompting, we want to set our aspect ratio. Now, it's 3 by 2 because I think this was at a time when it couldn't make any larger than that. Uh, but we're going to change that to 16 by, er, 16 by 9 for the thumbnail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two dashes at the back again. And I'm going to put dash dash V. V is in Victor version. And it's... Uh, main version right now is version 5.2. If I didn't put version 5.2 in the end it would default to that uh, but I'm going to put it there right now uh, just so because we're going to modify it here in a minute. I'm going to cut this out because I got to put the imagine prompt in and we're going to paste it in. So basically that's our prompt there. Now keep in mind when I'm trying to do a mule deer here uh, the deer that comes out probably won't look like a mule deer. Some of them might 
and some of them won't. So you, if I just leave it as deer, it's going to throw out all sorts of different kind of deer. But you can try and steer it towards being a mule deer. Uh, you'll see what you'll see what I mean here. Well, we'll see how it does. So we're going to launch this prompt, and uh, we'll give it a moment to generate, and we'll just uh, sort of see how it does. And what you can do is, since I added the version at the end there, you can easily uh, push up on the keyboard to throw the prompt all ready to go, and then you can quickly backspace and change the version and run it again. So say we wanted to see how this same prompt would do in version 5.1. Basically, just like this, I can just change it to 5.1 and run it again. You can run three at once, and you can queue up to ten. Um, with mid journey on most of, not all of them, but most of the, the base ones. All right, so basically, just like that, I've I've got our little charcoal uh, water culling uh, mule deer. Uh, some kind of look like mule deer, and some look more like elk. Or the top right one's got a bit of a elk thing going on. Uh, we'll open it up here in a second. And then what we're going to have is we're going to have another one ready here in a second of the of the version that came up before this. And sometimes you want to use older versions because it uh, interprets the, the prompting difference. And that's where it gets sort of uh, interesting too. So you can see the differences here. So it's like you're using two different AIs. Even though it's the exact same prompt, I'll, I'll show you the difference. So this is in their latest version 5.2. Uh, so you can see he's got sort of joined antlers kind of up here, sort of like a... Um, Sort of like a, a moose little connection up here or something like that, but uh, and these are a bit too thick kind of thing, right? So it, it tries. It likes to merge the antlers sort of together and kind of web them together in some like this one up here. So it gets a little tricky. Uh, but you know, again, for like thumbnail world, it it passes. Now it's it would be really hard to see on the video here, but you'll get things like signatures down at the bottom. This one's got some writing right in the middle. Uh, depending on the prompt and where it's uh, searching, and they've done really well getting rid of this. Now, this isn't actually someone's signature. Um, it's pretty much the AI saying, uh, I have looked at an image when I started to scan this in, or, or, you know, it doesn't copy, it does generate one-of-a-kind images, but somewhere in its algorithm, the image it was looking for had some writing down in the corner, like someone's signature, so it tried to sign it itself. Uh, so you get that sort of thing in there. So that's just a heads up on that. Uh, but, you know, still still pretty good. It's come a long way. And uh, just to show you how far it's come, one year ago, here, I'll do this now. I'm going to change this to version 3. I wonder if it'll even work. Yes, it will. I'm going to show you the version. Basically, I started at version 2 and version 3. Uh, it didn't know how to draw a deer at all. So we're going to show you just how long, how far this has come in one year. Uh, but let's look at version 5.1, so just the version that came out for it. So, different interpretation. We definitely have an elk down in the bottom left, or elk uh, still having trouble with the antlers there. Top left, same sort of thing, kind of wonky antlers there. Uh, top right, I don't know what kind of antler sort of set that is. It can still work though, and same sort of thing. Wants to really web those uh, antlers together. Uh, it's come a long way with the legs, though. A lot of the times you'd have a fifth leg in here and all that. Uh, now it's doing it's a lot better. And if there's minor problems like this, uh, say we uh, like number... Two, actually, two's got this uh, black block across the bottom, so we're not going to use that one. Let's use... This has got something in the background. Let's just try number one here. We're going to upscale number one, and we're going to get distracted real fast here. Here's version three. <laughs> this is... This is a deer. <laughs> so we've gone from that uh, to this in a year. So they've come a long way. A very, a very long way. Uh, this is how I started. Uh, some of my thumbnails are in this, are in this version. Uh, some of the ear earlier ones. Uh, but let's upscale uh, number one. And then what we will do. There is. We've got some kind of weird deer object here in in the back. And what you can change is in your prompt. See how I said mule deer? It can interpret that as plural. So what I should have said was a ah, mule deer and actually say that it's uh, singular because it might be tr trying to draw another mule deer back here. 
It looks like it's just, you know, like a burned out forest. It looks like a bit of a fire here, so I'm not too sure what's going on. But say we sort of like this, because it's, it's definitely like a charcoal scene. Maybe it's trying to make the trees charcoal, I'm not too sure. Um, but that's, you know, how each uh, version can do different interpretations. And you'll notice this one does not have the two different variations, because uh, that only came with version 5.2. So I think 5.1 struggles with the variations, actually. It takes a, takes a bit of getting used to. So we're going to run a variation, just see where it happens, there it comes out. In the past, when you ran a variation, all the variations came out worse than the original. So I, the older ones, I never, I stopped doing it. But, but these days, it's much better with their, with their new variations. I mean, they change so much. And then what, what I'll do is I'll go through sort of a shotgun approach here uh, to show you how you can sort of do how I sort of explore the different uh, AI algorithms to find. Uh, a pattern or a sort of an image I like to, to sort of base my thumbnail off of or use the thumbnail or work from there with. Uh, but let's open this one see how the variation's dead. So the variation did fine. Uh, right now I'm at, I like uh, the bottom right one, how the deer are standing and everything like that. I do not like the antlers and it's got uh, text in it. And you, you can sort of see how we're already sort of struggling to get um, to get an image that doesn't have you know, that uh, doesn't have any significant issues with it. Uh, mainly with the antlers. It's having trouble with the antlers. And so it's it's a little bit little bit of trouble there. I, yeah, see, I wish this one... What you can do is you can keep doing it. You can do another variation of this one. Uh, and just sort of keep going until you find something. Or you can just settle with it. Or you can try and fix it through Photoshop or anything like that. Uh, but what AI art is not is it's not a click one button and get a nice perfect result uh, right away. Uh, so it, you got you got to work at it. You got to do the generations. You got to try the different variations, all sorts of stuff. And there's a lot more modifiers that you can put in here, uh, and you can base images on on images you you give it. Um, all sorts of stuff this can do. It's quite amazing, really. And, uh, yeah, so there's a few other things I should actually uh, demonstrate as well. I can just sort of show you what this can do. Uh, I, I think we'll just kind of leave this deer alone. I'm not too sure. This guy's okay. I don't know if I can take him and make him up to kind of my standard of a thing. A lot is like, and it's very subjective, these images, right? Some of these people are like, ah, oh, this is all amazing. With me, I'm very, very picky with them. I don't like the antlers at all uh, with it. But the stance is good. He's kind of alerted. Legs are all right. All this is kind of neat. I sort of like how it's doing it. Uh, let's just run a variation just for fun. And see if we do get a good one out there. But you can see the differences between it, right? The same prompt on the, on the new version gets this, which some of these aren't even charcoal. Like this is top right one, not really charcoal or anything. Uh, but you can sort of see the charcoal inspiration down here, and of course the watercolor and smudges. So this is okay. Uh, same thing, kind of antlers. And texting. Let's grab this one. Let's do a... Um, this if I if I do V3, it's going to do a not a subtle but a strong variation run on number three. Let's just see how it goes. Our other one's done. Let's just see if it popped out anything more useful. Uh, I don't know what's going on with that guy's tail there. Interesting antlers. He's almost uh, at the point that you can kind of work with him. This one's got. The white tail kind of bum going on there. But I guess Meal's got the same kind of white patch, don't they? I can't remember. Now these guys have the, the big... He's he's taking on kind of a bit of an elk sort of stance there. Uh, this one's not bad. Okay for a thumbnail. But I remember it's not quite mule deer, right? It's just sort of... Sort of taking some mule deer into it. Uh, but there you go. Throw away the hunter on it, you've got a thumbnail. But yes, if you took this out and tried to print it, it'd be all kind of pixelated and stuff. So just heads up on that. That's a whole different whole different world doing upscaling to, to print and uh, getting imageries to, if you want to sell stuff and digital art and things like that. So I'm not an expert at it all. 
Uh, here's the variation strong of the one that I sort of liked it. So you can see we got many different stances. Still having trouble with the antlers though. They're having trouble. It might be the word, when I put the word mule in there, maybe it's doing it. So just for, uh, just for experiment, let's just see here. Let's grab it and let's just say, let's take mule out there and we'll just say a deer. We'll let it, we'll let it do whatever, whatever deer it wants to draw. We'll fire it away in version 5.2. And I think this is actually a good time uh, to show you how, if, if you don't know, you know, what sort of version of the bot you want to use, or, I don't know, you're just looking for, you know, to see which version or which, um, I don't know, algorithm will give you something what you're looking for. Uh, you can sort of do what I call sort of a shotgun approach here. And I will demonstrate this just so you can see just how many different versions there can be. And within each version, there's all sorts of different modifiers that you can do. Uh, and before we do that, we'll just pop into this to see. So I just hit a deer this time. So you see, kind of struggling. Uh, this one, uh, I can probably can probably do a variation of this and get it to work out. Uh, I'm doing sort of that elk scruff there. This guy's got like a giraffe neck. And he's got a really uh, chubby tummy. So you can see how it's not super, super easy uh, to get something that's... Uh, Right, well, you just kind of work away at it, and I'm going to do a strong variation of this guy. And then what we'll do is I'll run this prompt through the main AI algorithms and versions that uh, that I typically use, because you might find that interesting too uh, to see that what pops out. Because we're coming on to 40 minutes of me doing this, I don't know how much information will translate well to the viewer. <laughs> <laughs> how many people actually hang around for it it uh no matter it's just fun to fun to do a recording and to try something new um but yeah there's another video i did on this where i'm i'm putting uploading a picture and then you can tell it to look at the picture and use it as inspiration uh so we got 62 percent it's chugging away there and then what i'll do is i'll uh yeah, I'll show you sort of what I call a shotgun approach to try and see which which algorithm is taking my prompt and using it the best. That's the closest to what I want. So how did this variation do? This guy's got his neck right cranked around. His head's not the correct size. This one's okay. This one, you can work with this one. He's kind of a chubby, chubby, elky kind of deer. This one's okay too, not too bad. This one's um, not detailed enough in the face. Well, you could do, you know, you can kind of work with them. So you can upscale three, upscale four, and that'll sort of save them to uh, to your like profile. That was that's their web-based profile. And there's other things you can do, which I'll come to in a second here, which can sort of help out with this, which is also neat. Uh, but right now we're gonna do the shotgun approach here. So they're all gonna be 16 by 9 ratios, and I'm gonna show you sort of. What, now this is, uh, other people probably do this, but this is definitely a method sort of unique to me. <laughs> I find to do it. Uh, that's going to go by a little fast, because what I'm going to do is keep repeating the prompt, but I'm going to be changing the, the version on the on the end. And I'm going to show you just an example of some uh, of the different versions you can do. Using the exact same prompt, I'll show you how many different images you can get. Like, we're going to run... We're probably going to run into the... We're going to probably get like 50 or so images here in a very short amount of time. Uh, so this is basically how it works. You just run a bunch of images and then find any good ones and sort of work with them from there. So here we go. You ready? So this is going to be in a, a 5.2. And then within 5.2, you can do a, a what's called a different... Uh, you can stylize. And stylizing uh, gives the 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 algorithm a different path sometimes it gives it more freedom sometimes it gives it more or less freedom and they have one called style raw which uh is more of a expert kind of mode uh it gives it sort of less freedom but we're going to run uh dash dash style raw on that one and then we're going to switch it to dash dash s which is just stylized which uh, does the opposite and gives its freedom 
Uh, 5.2, there's a certain number you have to do, and there's a range to it. Um, it takes a while to get a hold of the range, but stylized 500 is pretty decent for a 5.2 version. Uh, so we'll fire that one off as well. And then that's pretty much all I'm going to do for now on the 5.2s. We're going to backspace out, and we're going to go into a version 5.1, and they're going to repeat. So this is where it's going to get a little fast. Uh, so we'll just kind of hold on here. So 5.1, I believe a 5.1 also has a style raw variation you can use. And then you can go back up and you can go into, we're going to do a style 1000. Uh, version 5.1 needs more stylization if you want uh, some changes there. So now my bot's starting to queue because I'm going too fast for it, but that's fine. Uh, that's all I'm going to do with 5.1. We're going to switch into just the normal 5 version 5. We're going to stylize it. It does not have a style raw, but we're going to do style 1000 on it. It's going to be fine for that as well with a version 5. Uh, then what we're going to do for funsies is we're going to kick it into version 4, which will get you much bigger differences. And there's a lot of different paths within version 4. Uh, but we're going to stick with just the basic ones. Uh, we're just going to do style 4, and then we're also just going to stylize it. Uh, or version 4 and stylize 1000 there with that as well. Just to get a couple of version 4s. They might not be very good, but sometimes it surprises you. Uh, just for fun, we're going to we're gonna do that version 3 again, because it's, it's just fun to see. Uh, so we're going to fire that one off as well. Oh, oh, I missed out this. And uh, just to add a bit more fun... Uh, what you can do is they have a um, an Asian-based bot called Niji, uh, which can really get you some interesting results, and it has different versions as well. We're going to do Niji 5, and then we're also going to stylize Niji 5, and I think I use a 1000 for it as well. Uh, so we're going to throw that off there. Uh, there's other modifiers you can use, like such as uh, Chaos and things like that. You can add uh, a bit of randomness in there and everything like that. Uh, but uh, I'll stay away from that now. I think that's a uh, enough uh, enough little little prompts for now. But we'll get um, I don't know about 50 images here. It's working away. Uh, so we're gonna scroll up near the top just so I can catch what it's doing because it's working away, and we'll 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 see what happened here. Uh, da -da 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 -da. So is this where we started? I think so. Here's our basic version 5.21. And we're just checking to see if there's anything cool. For some reason, it wants to make it uh, all like a burning down fire, but I think that's the charcoal, right? Instead of making a charcoal painting, this version has seen that the wood should be on fire, <laughs> making charcoal stuff. This is obviously what it's doing to it. So it's not making a charcoal painting. So if you really wanted to do that, you might actually have to use the word painting after charcoal or modify it a little bit here. Uh, this is trying to do sort of a charcoal watercolor painting, sort of. Uh, but I don't really want a burning down uh, forest or anything like that. But number one is still fairly decent, so we're going to grab him. And it just pops down at the bottom. Well, we don't have to worry about him. It'll pop down up down there. So this is our style raw version. Same prompt with the style raw. Uh, we're getting a bit of an elk kind of looking one here. This guy's all right. He's got sort of the, the big mane going on as well. Uh, this guy's okay. Nice and simple. Uh, and this guy is kind of spooky in the woods there. He's kind of like a... This is very atmospheric uh, sort of a thing here. He's got a bit of a bump going on here. I'm not too sure what that's about. Uh, but the upscales are uh, don't really take too much t of the uh, of the AI power to do. So it never hurts just to save them in case you want to work with them later. So we're going to do number one. We're going to do number three. These two are going to leave behind. And then we're going to check out 5.2 Stylize 500. So same prompt, same kind of AI thing, but we're stylizing now, giving it more freedom to what it wants to do. Uh, this one's kind of neat because it has a little buddy there, but instead of a cow, it added, uh, or a doe, it added spikes on it. So it kind of ruined it there by giving that guy antlers. It got a little confused, but that's fine. Uh, we're not going to take any of these. Don't like the antlers. You can take any of these and run them through variations, right? Like, I like the background of this one, everything like that. Uh, we're going to let that one go. Uh, 5.1, we're in the 5.1 basic one now. So this one's a different, whole different algorithm together. You can see sort of the charcoal painting on this guy here. Uh, we'll probably let that one go, let this one go. This one's got lots of fire. That's kind of cool, but we're going to let that one go as well. Uh, not any kind of keeper there. This thing too, like it really wants to do burning down fire. Uh, or burning down woods here. And we got style raw on 5.1, same sort of thing. Oh, it's got massive antlers here. 
Doot, doot, doot. And, I mean, that one, yeah, nope. Not a big fan, really. If any of them there. Stylized 5.1, 1000, or version 5.1, stylized 1000. Same sort of thing, fire. Just trying to see if any of them really jump out. This guy's missing a leg. Sort of thing. Yeah, that's kind of what you do. You just kind of play around with it. And remember, this whole video, I've been playing around with one prompt. One line of words. You take away one thing out of this, and you got to do the whole thing again. Um, like if, if you're doing the same sort of strategy. Uh, so this is this is version 5. This was a big leap when they came out with version 5. It got the quality really good. This one you can sort of see he's missing a leg, but maybe the leg is uh, right back behind him. I don't like the antlers. Uh, this one, this one's usable, really. He's off to the right. You can put a logo there, or some text down there if you want to use it for a thumbnail. Uh, maybe we'll grab him. Uh, not this one. He's kind of neat. You can tell the watercolor on that. There we go. So we'll grab that one. What do we got? Stylized 1000 on the version 5. Uh, this is doing well. He's got an extra leg. I'm not sure what's going on behind here. Might be an extra leg as well. Uh, but you can reversion these ones up. This one's not bad. I kind of like what it's doing there. Uh, this guy is not a big fan of the antlers. I uh, will grab. I don't think I'll hold on to this guy though. Yeah, we'll let him go. Remember, you can always you can come back, version them up, run the prompt again if you like what it's doing uh, to get it. This is just sort of a shotgun approach to to try to see which algorithm, which style is working with your prompt the best. And if you don't get any, you just kind of tweak up your prompt a little bit. There's there's so many different ways to approach this. Uh, this is version 4, quite an old version. Uh, we had to live with this version for quite a while. Uh, nothing really going to hang on to this, but this one will have a complete different interpretation, as you can sort of see. This one's actually got a photo of one on the wall. Not a big fan of any of them. The coloring in the atmosphere is kind of cool, but this guy's wild, wild kind of uh, antlers going on there. We got stylized 1000 on the version 4, so as you get back, it, it gets a little rough. It, gets, it was really challenging back here to get to get some animals here. And where happened to version 3? Version 3 just kind of disappeared. Anyways, we got the Niji bot, so this is the, the Asian variation of it. And you'll sort of see what I mean. Uh, it's kind of going into like a, an anime cartoonish kind of thing. Uh, but sometimes this works out quite well. Uh, none of these I'm going to keep. Uh, you know, you can still make use of this top right one in some scenarios, right? But we'll let that go, and then we're going to stylize the Niji version 5. Oh, it likes to do a lot of these uh, explosion sky stuff in the background. There's a lot of that. I mean, you can certainly just utilize this. Um, that would work, uh, catching catching your eye for like a thumbnail. Uh, this deer, he's just kind of awkward. He's kind of like a llama deer. Uh, this one's not bad down here. That's kind of cool. And, of course, we got a deer right in front of the sun. Uh, the Niji bot has trouble filling out the whole screen, though. We got black bars on the top and bottom, but you can fix that later. But we'll grab that one. He's kind of cool. And that's all of them. <clears throat> oh, here's version 3. Here's version 3 again. We got charcoal. I mean, it does the charcoal watercoloring pretty good, but it's got, you know, just doesn't know how to do the deer. So here's all the ones we saved, as you can go through. And they're all down here, and they just go right to your little profile. You can pull them out later. So, actually, I didn't save that many, did I? Uh, but that is sort of uh, a little bit of the basics. All right, well, as you can see, I can go on forever with this sort of thing. Uh, so I don't know if this is will be helpful for anybody. <laughs> but you, get, you get a little idea of how MidJourney operates and how I sort of utilize it. Uh, utilize it. Uh, they keep adding things, doing uh, a bunch of different things all the time. I will show a couple of the newer features off. Uh, I'll try and do it fairly quick. Let's go back to our lovely uh, German Shepherd. Uh, what, what should we, we can just make a prompt, right? German Shepherd. And let's just put them, you know, let's just put them in Alaska. Alaska. And we'll just say it's a sunset. Nice and simple. And we'll just put it straight in like that. Use version 5.2. And the first thing I'm going to show is, uh, oh, we forgot our aspect ratio. But that's fine. Well, I'll show you sort of how you can recover from that. Because uh, you can now do what's called outpainting. Or like an outfill. And we'll take a look at that real quickly as soon as this one generates. There, so it's firing up there now. 
So yeah, so it's going to do its best, put a German Shepherd in Alaska at sunset. We'll see what we get. It should be able to do a pretty good job on, on the German Shepherds. No complicated antlers or anything like that, and it definitely knows how to draw one. Oh, let's see. Do we get any nice usable ones? Look at those nice German Shepherds. Uh, this guy's kind of cool on the bottom. He got great big feet. Looks like that one's behind a rock. This guy's hanging out here. And he's, you know, they're working all right. He's got, he's sitting kind of weird on the log. And I'm not a big fan of the feet on this guy. Uh, let's use, ah, uh, let's use number three. All right, so there's number three popping up. Maybe. There we go. And, uh, yeah, so I guess he's, he's okay. Yeah, no, that's usable. That's German Shepherd for sure. Not sure what it's on his collar. The leg's kind of weird, but, you know, don't look at it too close at the moment. You can always run the variation again, of course. Actually, let's just do that real quick. Variation strong. And we'll see if we get, uh, you know, maybe we positioned a little better. Uh, but you can sort of see, uh, it's thinking of Alaska. I don't know why it's putting him in the water. Uh, but it really wants Alaska to have water. I mean, you can put Alaska summertime, Alaska autumn, Alaska winter. Uh, I'm actually kind of surprised I didn't put him in the winter. Uh, since I uh, didn't didn't specify. It likes to default Alaska with the winter. But maybe, since I put sunset with Alaska, it's uh, taking a look at any kind of sunset Alaska pictures it can find. And all of them are not in the wintertime, maybe. So... Uh, any other ones popping on him? This guy's ready to sort of jump. He's kind of ready to jump for his ball, too. Uh, I'm kind of liking the original one. He's kind of alert. He's sort of in... I don't know. I don't know why it's... Yeah, that's fine. We'll just use this guy. And then say you forgot to put... You know, you wanted in a thumbnail mode, uh, but I forgot. Uh, you can just do simple out painting. So what we can do is we can do custom zoom. You get a little pop-up here, and you can actually modify uh, your your prompt. This is more advanced kind of stuff. But what you need to do is you have to remove the the Alaska or the German Shepherd part because we don't want more we'd want, we don't want it painting in more German Shepherds. We just want the Alaska sunset part as it uh, as it increases um, the image. So remember it only has a square. It doesn't have anything else generated. We're doing the opposite of cropping. We're going to be generating outward and we're going to do zoom one, zoom two. That's how far you're zooming back. And I don't want to actually zoom back. I just want to take the same zoom and uh, and sort of fill in the landscape. So we're going to turn this uh, square image into a 16 by 9. All right, so it's done. It does take longer for it to do that. It has to analyze the photo and then generate it off of that. So the middle square is the same in each one, and it just kind of grows out. So what you're looking at is the outer sides to see which one you kind of like the best. Uh, so we got some nice hills here. There's two kind of, two flat of the hills there. Not a big fan of this one. Uh, this one's okay. This one's better. So the bottom two I like the best. Uh, hmm. You know what? I think I'm going to go for number three. So we're going to grab number three. And so basically you had a whoopsie where you had this. Oh, I only got it in square. And uh, now I have it uh, in a 16 by 9 Ready for a thumbnail. Way of the hunter. Doggy coming to Alaska. Uh, sort of thing, right? Uh, so there you go. There's 16 by 9. Nice and simple. Does a perfectly good job with the expanding the image out. Now let's just say here's a little trick you can you can also use. Um, say you know the detail and the little collar charm kind of thing or the tag here wasn't very good. Um, you don't want it to be this close because there's a little bit of imperfections in there, or it's just just too close to you. Or two, you can set different zoom levels. You can back out the camera more and, and fill it in. I like doing it in small steps. So this is what the zoom out one and a half times is. So we're going to let them zoom out here. Zoom out to takes it a bit too much. I like doing it in, in little pieces here. Uh, you can also do the reverse. You can make it back into a square. Uh, but it won't shrink them down to a square. It'll turn this, it'll turn this into a, a square, uh, keeping the original 16 by 9 in there. Uh, so we're going to zoom out and just take a look at that as well. Actually, while we're looking at that, we'll look at one more thing here. So we got our 16 by 9 here. Uh, but saying, you know, say we don't really want him in the center. 
Uh, say, you know, we're doing a little thumbnail -y thing and we want to put some text over to the left or whatever. Uh, these little arrows are telling uh, the AI which way you'd like to expand the image. So we're going to expand out to the left. And I'll show you what that does. And then I'll show you also how we can correct it um, when it does that. So first things first though, here's our zoom out. Now it had a trouble with a couple of them. Uh, it sort of failed on these two on the left. Uh, just put black bars in there, couldn't figure out what to do. Uh, but these two, uh, it did it did zoom out just fine. And what we're going to do is we're going to do number four on the bottom right. Looks like it's the best one. So what we went for is we went from here, uh, our little doggy here, we corrected to a 16 by 9 with some outpainting. And, or outfill, or whatever they call it, and then we zoomed out a little bit more. So there, so you lose some of the detail because you're zooming out, but uh, you get a bit of wide angle kind of thing going on here. Uh, the best one's definitely this one, I think. I don't think this uh, shot actually required to be zoomed out, but uh, just for an example. Then uh, we pan to the left, so now we have some more examples here. And we pan to the left. Now we got some interesting sunsets going off here. We have two sunsets rocking. <laughs> so that's kind of funny. Uh, but maybe that sun's so bright, it's brightening up over here. Not a big deal. Let's just pick one. This kind of looks like a volcano going off. This one's kind of cool. This one's that. I don't like that one. This one looks like Mordor off in the distance. We're going to grab number one. Bam. So there. Now, we don't have a 16 by 9 anymore, though. We have an extended wide angle kind of shot. But we uh, filled in the, the sort of pebbly rock beach for us, and we got the... The double sunset going on, but you know what can you do? Uh, but play around with this more. But we're going to keep rolling there, and then say, "Oh man, I I still need this to be my my YouTube thumbnail." We're going to do the custom zoom again. We're going to go zoom one because we don't need it to back out anymore, and we're going to change this to 16 by 9, and it's going to keep uh, the middle image, and it's going to um, generate what it needs to fill a 16 by 9 area. And there we go. It attempted to do its best at turning that great big long ratio into a 16 by 9. So this one, it got black bars on it. This one puts some really strange uh, kind of reddish glow from the sun on here. It doesn't work with the rest of the picture. Uh, this one's okay here, and this one's okay as well. So it had to fill in and zoom out. I was trying to see if one's better than the other one. I think probably number two. I think so. Kind of works. Well, four works as well, really. I think I think we'll just do number two. It doesn't matter. He can take them both anyways. Over there. There's a German Shepherd. And now we got our 16 by 9. We can put a little text over here and all sorts of fun stuff. All right. So that is some of what you do in Med Journey. All right, there you go, a Woodsman8047. I will take my one million views now. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, I, I touched on a lot. That is a lot of the basics. A lot of it's just playing around with it, getting practice with it, uh, getting your prompts uh, sorted out. I've just been using basic prompts and uh, one from a long time ago. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, I want to say that's scr just scratching the surface, and it, it sort of is, uh, but I did go through a bunch of the, the features there. There are a few that I didn't uh, go over. Uh, you can generate um, prompts uh, by what you can do is, here, I'm just going to save this one to my uh, hard drive. So what you can do is you have, if you're having trouble generating a prompt, or you have an image, you know, that's not copyrighted or something that you shouldn't be going into. I mean, mid-journey you can use other people's images because it's like an open community sort of thing. Um, but you can use, I don't know, stuff. You can do it, you can tell the, um, the AI to uh, tell you what it thinks the prompt should be to get the image. So it's, it, what is this describe? And what you can do is you can send it an image. And I'll send it an image that we just made. All right, I'll just upload that. I'll just take a second there. There it goes. And uh, so what this says is there's the image we uploaded that it made itself, so it should be able to figure out what the prompts were. But see how we just put 
like Alaska Sunset or German Shepherd Lake had a basic prompt, it sees it as, it gives you four, four results. Uh, so it guesses four times, and it gets more broad the further it goes down. I think its best guess is the number one. Ignore the aspect ratio for now. I don't know why they haven't fixed that, but it, it's, it's, it's about 16 by 9, but it's off by a couple units for some reason. But anyways, uh, but we've got Shepherd Dog with Sunset over the rocks in the style of Mike Campo. So that's some kind of photographer or artist or something like that. Dark Reflections, Mandy Dishers, another person, Crimson Amber. So it's got a lot of people it's using in there for the image. And then we got another one, Standing on Rock, Sunset, and German Shepherd Dog at Sunset in the Pacific Northwest. So it grabbed that. At none of these hit Alaska, right? No, just adventure theme. Like how would it know Alaska, right? But I like how it said Pacific Northwest, even though that's not Alaska, but that's an interesting guess. And the style of uh, photorealistic landscapes, photo bash, contest winner. National Geographic photo, hyper-realistic water, 32K. Oh, man, this prompt, it's leaving nothing out. And then number four, a dog sits on the rocks near a rim with the sun setting behind in the style of a photorealistic landscape. And Ma Maori art, or what's that? Is this, like, Chinese for male, or... Mao, I guess, not male. Mao? <laughs> I don't know. Another photo bash, UHD, image, dark, amber, crimson, reflections, mirroring. Oh, National Geographic again. And what you can do is see, uh, say I gave you this image and you're like, oh, I want to make it, uh, make one my own, just like that. You can put it in your describe it and then you can, it'll tell you what you think it did. And what you can do is I just hit imagine all and see what it comes up with. This will take a moment for it to do it all. All right, and it's done. Let's see how it did. Uh, so result number one. So it's trying. Look. This guy's on some rocks with a sunset, and this looks like Alaska. So this one did pretty good, I think. Uh, this guy's kind of sitting kind of weird. He's happy but sitting in the water. Um, he's looking kind of sleepy. Uh, I might take number two, though. Boink. So let's try, and here's another attempt at dead. Oh, we got kind of like a long-haired shepherd over here. Oh, another little long-haired kind of... That's not a German shepherd. Uh, but these are okay, too. He's at, a, like, a tension and a rock. Oh, he's still got the water in there. Nice little pose going on there. So that's kind of cool. What else did it do? Oh, we got standing dogs in this one. They're all kind of at alert. He's got messed up legs. Uh, but that's uh, fairly nice, too. All kind of workable photos here. Here we go, and we got the one more try. Now this one uh, didn't do it. It just said a dog sits. It didn't uh, didn't specify a German Shepherd in this one. So we got different uh, different little puppies. Oh, this one's a nice little. This one looks soft. Oh, and that's a good spot too. It's kind of a funny looking dog there, and this one's uh, off thinking in the distance. Uh, so there you go. That is that. Well, if you made it to the end of the video, that is amazing. Uh, yeah, that's just sort of, uh, the basics of MedJourneys. Remember, there's all sorts of different AI art programs out there. There's, uh, free ones you can try, uh, and then just kind of mess around with them, but they'll all, they'll all be sort of different. Um, but anyways, uh, yep, that is the video, I think. There's still tons and tons I could go on about, but it's, uh, now over an hour, so hopefully, uh, that helps, uh, somebody if they're interested in, in trying out MedJourney or whatnot, um, yeah, there's, uh, there's a lot to catch up on if you jump into it, really. And then you can do all sorts of stuff, because Photoshop now has uh, AI built into it as well. And one of the more popular combos now is uh, you take Midjourney here, and then you take uh, the Im images from Midjourney, and then you blend them into your fo uh, Photoshop work, but you also can use AI within Photoshop uh, to... Uh, yeah, to work to work on uh, to work on the image in many different ways, uh, which is uh, very interesting. So you take the unlimited possibilities of Midjourney, and then you put more unlimited possibilities into Photoshop on the same image, and uh, it goes a little crazy. Then you have to upscale it, and there's AI that does upscaling as well. So it's a, it's a big world of upscaling. Anyways, uh, I don't know if that video is any helpful to anybody or not, but <laughs> there it is. If you if you made it the hour, well, thanks for watching. 
uh, leave any questions or anything like that down in the comments and uh, I can always do another video uh, probably not this long but if you need uh, want to see how a certain image is made or uh, have like a specific uh, sort of request just kind of interested in it uh, to see what I think about uh, how an image could be created uh, I'm always up for a challenge or to to try a few things out uh, but I'm gonna have to shut it off for now because that's a very long time to talk about mid journey uh, thank you uh, for watching and everyone uh, take care see you in uh, way of the hunter soon